I'm going to be reading from Ghosts of Winter, which looks like that, and there is a pile of them at the back, coincidentally. Um, it's, um, which is good, actually, because it's quite an odd novel. It's my second novel. Um, I, I've got four novels with bold strokes, but this is the one that I think is... When you read the reviews, people really like the romance in this one, which is why this is the one that I'm reading from today. Um, the context is Winter is actually a manor house, a stately home in the north of England, and my main character, Ross, has inherited it. It's in a bit of a state, so she needs to get an architect in to help her renovate the house. That architect is Anna, who is very beautiful, um, and there's some romance developing, and um, it's Christmas, it's snowy outside, um, Ross is entirely expecting to spend Christmas entirely on her own in an empty house, and then Anna turns up and brings the wine and some other gifts, and that's where we are now. So, I clinked my glass against hers. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We each took a sip of our wine. My taste buds were dazzled by a sweet, spicy fruitiness, silky and smooth on my tongue. What do you think of my choice? She asked, watching my reaction. It's delicious, I told her. You should be getting apricots, dried nuts and cinnamon. She paused and raised an eyebrow as she waited for my reaction. When I just stared at her and wondered what to say, her face relaxed and she laughed. Though if I'm honest, I got that from the label. As much as I enjoy a good wine, I can't place the flavours. No, that would just be pretentious, I said wryly. Yes, just like shopping at Harrods, she said in the same tone. I took another sip of the wine and noticed she was drinking hers rather quickly. The unusual excitement emanating from her made it seem there was something more she wanted to say. A pleasant tension with none of the awkwardness there had been between us before hung in the air. I was about to tell her to take a seat, since she had been standing since she entered, when my eyes fell on that plastic bag she had been carrying, which now rested on the bottom step of the staircase. I looked at her with curiosity. So, what's in the bag? My other gift? I saw a hint of challenge in her eyes and wondered what on earth had put that gleam there. My body surged in response. What is it? I asked, unable to look away from her. Are you sure you want to know? Of course I do. Is it expensive? Not at all. I didn't pay a penny for this one. A mysterious remark only intrigued me further. Now I really have to know. The atmosphere between us grew charged. My legs were a little weak as I gazed at her. Okay then, she said, going to pick up the bag. She opened it and I saw green leaves. This was growing on an apple tree at the bottom of my garden. You brought me a plant, I asked, surprised and perhaps even disappointed. Then I caught her expression and grew warmer, without really knowing the reason. This is more than just a plant, she said, pulling it out of its plastic wrapper. I saw at once it was a large clump of mistletoe, complete with white berries. I said nothing. I simply looked from the distinctive foliage in her hand and back to her face. She was watching me keenly, with a touch of nervousness, maybe, but mostly playfulness in her features. It is Christmas, after all, she said. It is. My throat had seized up and the words were almost a croak. And it's nice to have a few traditions. Yes. Anna took a few paces towards me, eyes still intently on mine, and raised the whole clump of mistletoe into the air above her head. I followed it with my eyes until she spoke and my gaze jolted back to her face. What do you say, Ross? She said, her tone challenging. Shall we honour the tradition? I covered the remaining distance between us slowly. The couple of inches in height difference meant I had to tilt my head back to maintain eye contact. There was her perfume again, citrus and jasmine, heavy like incense, intoxicating. Her shoulders were rising and falling with her breathing, and the ice blue of her eyes had mellowed to a softer indigo. As I moved closer, her breath was warm and carried the spice sweetness of the wine. Our faces were almost touching now, our breath mingling. We paused as if we both wanted to linger in the last instant of dizzying anticipation. At the same moment, we moved that small distance closer, and our lips brushed. Hers were satin soft, and my own melted into them. Mm -hmm.